Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sonic Unleashed Let's Play. So in the last part we've been to Missouri's nighttime stage, we saved Professor Pickle who has really questionable eyebrows that cover his eyes, and we just got a, more information about him and about Dark Gaia. So yeah, apparently the Chaos Emeralds are our plot uh, MacGuffins of the game, but go figure. <laughs> They've been the plot, uh, plot devices for a very long time, so it would seem that we have to look for these Gaia temples in order for them to, uh, in order for us to actually restore the Chaos Emeralds uh, back to power. It kind of reminds me of a concept of this one game I played, maybe it was a TV show, I don't know, I can't think of it at the top of my mind. <laughs> Because, like like I said in previous part, people, it's really hot in my apartment. <laughs> it's just really hot right now. I'm just sweating. It's... Uh... But enough about my whole personal problems going on right now. I'm just currently, right now, just looking for any sun or moon metals I could, you know, scavenge up. Because I know for a fact that in every single world, or in every single hub world, except for, I think, Shamar, there is about, I think, two, well, actually Shamar and actually this hub world, Spagonia, there's usually two of each, um... Metal, so you can find like in the daytime you can find two moon, in nighttime you can find uh, two sun, but with Spagonia and with uh, Shamar there's four. So you know, if you don't want to, if you just need a tiny bit more metals in order for you to get to the next stage, and you don't want to go to the levels, then you can always check the hub worlds too, especially when you unlock more and more of the hub worlds, you know, as you go along. And now we're finally introduced to the whole world map system, which. Frankly, it's not really hard to grasp or understand whatsoever. You have flags that um, represent each continent, and all you just need to do is just move the cursor to it, and by pressing the X button, somehow, I guess, Sonic and Tails have the power to, I don't know, control the cosmos or something like that? <laughs> I don't know, but they're able to move the uh, sun so you can make uh, the continents day or night. It's that simple. It's nothing, it's nothing too difficult. To go off of or anything like that but you know we're gonna be moving on to Missouri because apparently that's just the place we have to go I'll explain what uh, makes uh, what uh, tells you where you need to go and everything like that but you know time for some more plot I'm not gonna lie, for something that's supposed to be African, they sound way too white. Hey, I won't have to do anything nasty. All you need to do is tell me where the Temple of Gaia is. We're not telling you anything! <laughs> so, you dare to defy me, do you? What? Sonic! Yo, yeah. Eggman! <laughs> Thanks for that little skydiving adventure the other day. Uh, I should have known you'd still be alive, you stubborn little hedgehog. What are you doing out here? I see no reason to tell you. In any case, I'm busy. Farewell! Uh, hey, wait! That's playing dirty! Come back! Just ignore him. Is everyone here all right? Yes. Yeah, all right, so after that interruption with uh, Eggman. So, yeah, he's obviously here for something. Just we need to figure out what uh, he's up there, uh, up here for. There, there has to be a reason. He's not here by coincidence. And <laughs> knowing Eggman, it's something. It really is. But like I said, those uh, fighting medals in the hub world, yeah, I found those medals right there. And right then and there. And sometimes you'll see me uh, pause while I'm in the hub world and everything like this. Because I just want to make sure I have, you know, all the medals I find in the hub world. Because, you know, anytime I get medals, uh, the less I will have to hunt for them in the future. So, yeah. I know that's once someone's going to uh, um, bring this up because... Uh, 
either with the whole hub world and everything like that because you know uh sonic uh actually when it came to sonic unleash in its development um sonic unleash had different developers for the playstation and uh playstation 3 and xbox 360 edition compared to the wii and playstation 2 versions i know there were two different developers and everything like that but i'll go on more about the different hub worlds in each games or everything like that but folks welcome to missouri's daytime stage i think it's called the savannah citadel and it was the stage that was just shown off the most when the game came out. I remember this stage just being shown off a shit ton when the game was first released and everything like that. In fact, I think this was the first stage they ever showed um, when um, they teased us uh, more of uh, daytime stages for, um, uh, for Sonic. I think this is actually the first daytime stage they actually teased us with. And for what Savannah has is that it has these uh, poles, as you can see. You know, poles uh, returning from, um, you know, from S Sonic Adventure 2. You know, they're in here, and, well, they, they, they kind of act differently from what they did in Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, you know, if you play games with certain, like, pole physics like that, you'll, you know, understand how they work. And I hate that pole so much in this area, because when you're trying to, you know get the uh, stuff that you need in order for you to get uh, the momentum you need to get up to the next pole and you try to home attack it, it, it just, you know, sometimes home attack through it. It, it just sucks so much. It, it really does. It works and then sometimes it doesn't. And what I'm failing to do there is that um, you've been, you guys have been probably seeing those little, um, I guess, cannons or something like that that have question marks. Um, you know, depending on uh, what the cannon is, you know, you can d press a different button. You know, like X button shoots you forward, A button shoots you up, and I think the B button um, shoots you down. But you're n you're never gonna have to use that unless you know you're playing the final stage, which is Eggman Land. But we'll get to that way way later. But yeah, what I failed to do is press the X button because there actually is a faster shortcut. And this is actually the first stage to um, kind of fully endure us with the whole drift mechanic. The drift mechanic in here is kind of stiff, I'm not gonna lie. It was the first game to introduce it and everything, so yeah, it's a bit stiff, but, you know, Sonic Colors would improve, uh, improve it, and then, you know, Generations would just, you know, perfect it. I, I love the drifting in Sonic Generations. Oh my god, it's just, you drift on a dime and everything like that. Um, the... To show how stiff the drifting is in this game, uh, just wait till we get to Spagonia's daytime stage. It is the perfect example of how stiff it is and everything like that. In fact, I think there's actually an extra Missouri stage in here that you just keep drifting and drifting and drifting. That's another great example to show you how stiff it is and everything like that. But, you know, they expect you to use the B button, but literally, li little, do, uh, they, uh, little do you know is that you can actually use the L trigger and the right trigger to actually used to drifting. I find that a whole lot easier to do and everything than to, you know, hold down the X button to boost and then press the B button. It, just, it feels funky to me and everything like that. But that was Savannah Sidel, really easy stage uh, to introduce us to the drifting and whatnot. He did not really just say that. Behold, my new power, Egg Beetle, go! Well, after that uh, really painful question I asked uh, Sonic, here's our second boss of the game, the Egg Beetle. And this is actually what the daytime stage bosses are going to be like. We're going to be going against some big robot that kind of has a resemble of like a beetle. And we're just going to be dashing into it and homing attack it. That's pretty much how I could sum up all the daytime stage bosses in a nutshell. 
So, to pretty much beat the egg beetle and everything is that you have to wait until the pincers up front is, uh, you know, spread apart. You have to wait until the cockpit is revealed in order for you to attack it. You can either A, use the dash into, uh, you can use the dash feature and dash into the cockpit, or you can use the homing attack. Um, I think the homing attack does more damage, but with the dash, you're actually able to do more hits with the dash and everything. Especially when you have your ring energy meter up pretty high, because once you hit him once, he goes flying back, and the cockpit is revealed a little bit, so you are able to go in for a second shot if you have the dash and everything, and then they'll have these uh, 2D sections and everything like that. He'll try to um, drop bombs, and he'll try to pinch you and everything like that, but yeah. You can defeat this boss relatively quickly if you know what you're doing, but I failed to uh, capitalize it because this is actually another uh, one thing I didn't um, test play on. I never test play any of the bosses. I test play most of the daytime stages and <laughs> none of the nighttime stages and none of the bosses either. I, I haven't test played any of them or any of those things I just said. But he, he, for what he is, he is relatively easy, even though it looks like I'm getting hit a lot. You know, there's always a ton of rings for you to collect. And yes, there are sun and moon medals along the way. So, you know, all you just need to do is just quick step in the right direction and everything, and you'll be A-OK -okay with them. You, you really should have no problem. The quick step is pretty much your best friend when it comes to this fight and everything. So yeah, see, I use the dash uh, feature and. It did a, a significant amount of damage, but I think the homing attack does just a little bit more. And here we are. Usually when he does that, this is when we transfer into the 2D um, part. And all you just need to do is just, you know, dodge the missiles, which is really easy to do. And, you know, dodge the bombs and everything. Whatever he throws at you, it's in this 2D perspective, it's actually pretty easy to dodge anything he throws at you. And like I said, there's always enough rings for you to grab on. And I don't think you lose all your rings when you get hit by any of this stuff. I think you only lose, like, you lose a humongous chunk, uh, no doubt. But I don't think you lose that much, though. I don't think you lose all of them. You do lose a humongous chunk, see? Just keep doing what you're doing, and, you know, you'll be fine. And see, since I was boosting right then and there, I was able to get it a three-second uh, hit. And right there, I did a third hit. So, yeah, if you know how to abuse the dash uh, really well, you can beat him relatively quickly with how many attacks you do. And, yeah, okay, that definitely proves my point that uh, the homing attack does way more damage to the dash, but with the dash, you can input more hits on him. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going through the same <laughs> circle over and over and over again. I'm not too sure if I get all the sun and moon medals. I mean, a like I said, if you're not a big fan of backtracking, make sure to get the Sun and Moon medals when you're in this fight because that way you don't have to backtrack and do this whole fight again because the only way for you to collect them is for, you know, to beat the boss. And that's the Egg Beetle in a nutshell. Uh, if I were any better, or ooh, probably would have test played this, I probably would have gotten a better grade, but I don't remember what grade I get. I think it's like a C or something like that. Yep, it's a C. Oh, well, whatever. At least I got all the moon medals and sun medals, so I don't have to worry about them. Relatively easy fight. Like I say, if you know how to abuse the dash and, you know, the overall uh, gameplay mechanics, you'll win the fight easy. Ah. Is that the Temple of Gaia? Let's check it out. this place. Hey, Sonic! There's something weird here, right in the middle. Hey, what's this hole? Wait! There could be some kind of... Whoa! <laughs> oh, no. It's Indiana Jones Syndrome. Huh? 
What's that? Hmm. Somehow the continent just was able to just get back into the core. <laughs> Seriously, what the hell? Does a sun magnetic force just comes out of nowhere and just pulls the continent back to the core? <laughs> Logic, what the fuck is that? <laughs> So does Tails have some sort of satellite that's orbiting the Earth or something? Sweet. At this rate, you'll have the whole world back together in no time, Sonic. Planet-sized jigsaw puzzle? Sounds like a great excuse to see the world. Nah, I don't know. But anywho, folks, that's one continent down, six more to go. We got a long way to go before we're... I'm done with this game whatsoever so folks we'll be continuing on looking for those Gaia temples in part six so until then I will see you guys later